Good morning ladies and gentlemen. So here I am for Conqueror's Blade with a very in-depth beginners slash starters guide. So if you are brand new to the game, I'm going to cover everything right from the get-go so you know exactly what you're doing and what to expect from the game. So if you are experienced, you may pick up a few tips from this uh, video as well. So keep watching, there may be a few things in here that you have may have forgotten or just never knew about to begin with. So starting off from the character screen, once you select your server, make sure you choose the right server because once you choose the server, you can't transfer your character over to a different one. Then you have the option of going through and customizing your character. Now there's a whole host of different customization options in the uh, game for both male and female. So go through, have a good play around, see what you fancy and choose a character customize exactly to your taste because once you go through and change all the customization stuff it will cost you money to uh, go back and change change the gender or change anything about your character other than its hair color you can buy in-game hair dyes for the hair color So once you get through the character customization bit, you'll have a load of cutscenes to watch, which I have actually skipped, and then you'll be given the choice of the camera mode. Normal is what I play with and what I think a lot of people play with. Cinematic is quite nice, but it can take your attention away from the combat. But again, one of those things that just have a play around with and see what you fancy. Going into the weapons, there are a whole host of different weapons you can choose here. Now these range from ranged uh, long bow, short bow to sword and board, so sword and shield, long sword and shield, to the big pole axe, glaive, nadachi, which is your katana, you've got muskets, jaw blades, so you've got loads of different kinds of weapons in here, and this is the point of the game where you can literally keep choosing all the different weapons, having to play with them, trying out the first initial abilities as well, and see which weapons you really get on with because once you choose a weapon you are going to be stuck with it for a little while until you get into the game a little bit more once you get into the game a little bit more you can unlock as many weapons as you want using skill points but it does take a little while to actually accrue these skill points so you are better off just choosing a weapon that you are going to really get on well with to begin with because that one will unlock straight away when you use the weapons in the game as well, you will actually accrue skill points specifically for that weapon, so you'll be able to unlock a load of new abilities. Once you choose a weapon, go out and do the horse training. Now this training is quite good because it gets you jumping and galloping over different obstacles, so you, it really gives you the basics of how to learn to ride a horse in Conqueror's Blade. If you feel like you need to do this training again, then once you complete the, uh, the round, the map, then you can go through and do the training again with the horse. I would suggest doing it a couple of times because you want to be learning it here really rather than in a real life battle. So once you're through doing the horse training, then you will be put into the board camp. Now here is where you do your first batch of quests. Go through these quests and do them properly. Read everything and listen to everything because these actually teach you how to play the game, how to use units, how to unlock units and everything like that. I will be putting out separate video guides for those things more in depth. But as an initial kind of basis, these are really good tutorials because it will take you through all of the game systems and what to expect and how to use them properly. The functions of the systems and what you need to be doing to actually be using them efficiently. Once you go through and unlock a few quests, you will gain a little bit of money as well for your initial starter journey in Conqueror's Blade. However, once you do the unit training and then you do a, a mock siege battle, you will be given your first batch of units. It's not like back in the day when I started, you had to buy literally all your units right from the get-go. Nowadays, they're quite nice and they actually give you a few units to begin your game with. The unit training specifically, I would say, pay a lot of attention to because this this teaches you how to use the units and what kind of set formations and how and their skills to actually efficiently use such units because there's so many different skills, there's so many different formations and there's so many different unit types in this game. You really want to be learning how to use these unit types because as you go through, most unit types are either cavalry, ranged, shields or melee and they will play very similar to 
earlier units in the tree. So the really late end golden era ones will play fairly similar to the early era melee units, but you need to learn how to use them efficiently to actually get them set up into positions which are going to score you loads of kills. And that unit, tra unit training tutorial teaches you exactly how to do that. Once you go through the unit training, like I said, you will unlock a batch of swordmen. So these are now in your barracks, which is your first initial unit. Once you go through and complete a few more quests, then you'll come up to this guy, and this guy will give you a travel pass. Now, this travel pass is the start of the game. This is going to allow you to go out into the world, choose a starting area, and then begin your Conqueror's Blade journey properly. So your world map is split into five different zones, but you only have the choice of four to actually start in. This is Ostaria, Ungajerva, Maoyang, and Langyong. So it doesn't matter really which one you choose, to be honest, because you can run through between each of them. The only thing that it does is it will set your camp to its capital city so you'll be stuck in an area for a little while until you get enough silver to actually buy a migration token or three migration tokens if you want to change uh, county you can now go through the borderlands so when I first did this video when I recorded this video the borderlands were locked but you can now run through the borderlands so you have access to each of the different world zones but you're not going to really need to worry about actually changing world zones for quite some time so don't worry about which starter area you're in unless you're playing with friends or you're already part of a house make sure you choose the specific area for your friends or for your house so once you get into the game you are put into that zone's capital city and this is the world map that you're looking at now it looks very in-depth it looks a lot more confusing than it actually is once you've actually sat down and learned how to use it. So the icons on the maps are for towns, for villages, for forts and for resource nodes. Now resource nodes are going to be very important for you later in the game because you go out of the town, you go around the world map and you pick up these resources to do thief quests or to do crafting. So there's huge amount of different resources out in the world of Conqueror's Blade. Now these are iron ore, copper ore, wood, food, uh, cloth, skins, there's loads of different ones. When you get into a house later on in your Conqueror's Blade career as well, these are all the different zones that the houses fight for over in Tuesday's Territory War and Saturday's Territory War. Now these Territory Wars start at seven o'clock GMT, so whatever your equivalent time zone is, seven o'clock GMT, so Greenwich Mean Time or UK time, that is the time that it starts at in Congress Blade on Tuesdays and on Saturdays. Territory War lasts for an hour. Unless there is a battle that goes on past that hour mark, then the Territory War will extend up until half past eight. So in total, you could be fighting for an hour and a half in a Territory War. But again, this won't apply to you until you get into a house or you make your own. So now what I'm doing is going through the character tab. So this is your main character tab. This is where you change your weapons, your armor, and you can do loads of different things through here as well. You can take off the headset, you can go through your stats and learn actually what all the different stats are. When you level up as well, you will be given stat points to put in to strength, agility, armor, toughness. Now these will change how your character plays and these will change the different abilities of your character as well. So you get weapon skills and you get character abilities or character points. Obviously strength, you're going to be hitting a lot harder. Armor, you're going to be able to tank a lot more. Toughness increases your health and agility is pretty much weapon damage for bows or jaw blades, that kind of thing, because it increases the penetration and the damage of quick agile weapons. So you have a mount screen as well where you've already been given a horse which is very nice of them because I remember having to actually buy mine so you can change your horse's armour in that screen. The attire screen, once you start unlocking skins for your mounts or for your weapon or for your character, this is where you actually go through and equip them. Now all of the skins right now that I'm going through are all actually paid for skins so sovereigns are the in-game currency. Now you top up on sovereigns on the website and then you transfer them into the game into whichever character you want those sovereigns on. 
Not only can you buy a tire, you can go through and buy a whole host of different consumable items or migration tokens, loads of different stuff in the store. But to be honest, if you are buying sovereigns, have a look on the website as well because you can actually buy stuff through the website with sovereigns as well. And there are some offers that come up on there. Just going through the last couple of tabs here, career, it breaks down all your achievements and all your experience and all your different stats for your career so far. And skills, skills is where you can see the skills for all the different weapon types, whether you've unlocked them or whether you haven't unlocked them. You can go through that and see exactly what kind of skills you want to be aiming for with the weapons you are using. Going into your barrack screen, now your barrack screen is going to be one of the most important screens of your game. So the units is the amount of units that you can currently lead. So you can have loads on the left here, but you can only unlock and build up to a certain amount of units. So at the minute, I can only lead eight different unit types at the moment, which is more than enough to begin the game with. The first two units I've been given hold of from the Borderlands. I know I get another melee unit and I get another ranged unit after I do the next couple of quests in the capital city as well, as they go through and explain how to get into field battles and siege battles and everything like that. Going into unit details, now this is a really important screen because you can put doctrines once you start unlocking those, which are things that will either buff your uh, your unit types or try and negate their bad things. So once you start picking up doctrines, there'll be things like different, uh, they'll be increasing your health, they'll be increasing the damage output, that kind of thing. Again, put on what you think is going to be the best. Once you go into veteran C, you get bought up the skill screen for that unit type as well. So what, the more you use a unit type in battle, the more experience they'll get, and then you'll have a point per level to put into the veteran C unit skills tree for that unit type as well. So you can go through here and you can build up the units to how you want them. Now generally, as a rule of thumb, the bottom line is the defense line, the top line is the offense line. So if you want a stronger, more hard hitting unit, then put points in the top line. If you want more of a tanky kind of take a lot of hits unit, put points in the bottom line. So what I'm going through now is the warband build. So when you go into a game, you can set up these builds right here, which will by default put those unit types into the battle for you so you haven't got to worry about doing it every time you get into a different battle. So your inventory screen obviously has your inventory, has your wagon, has your doctrines. Doctrines I've already explained. Wagon are all your resources which you will collect from resource nodes out in the world map plus all your uh, trophies which you can gain from killing rebels and doing rebel camps, things like that. Friends and groups tab is next long and it says as it says it's friends and groups i'm not really going to go into much there this is the store page which i was talking about this is the page where you spend real life sovereigns and how you can go about actually topping up and the prices for them there are some good offers on here you can get your attire and everything through here as well but like i said you can also get consumables you can get chests you can get um premium accounts as well which are very good and they will um they help you level up very, very quickly, premium accounts, plus gain you a lot of money very, very quickly as well in comparison to playing without a premium account. I wouldn't worry about it to begin with. I would say probably up until level 60, you're gonna be quite safe just playing as a free to play because you will gain levels very, very quickly up to level 60. Once you hit level 60, a load of other stuff unlocks. You may wanna be considering premium time then if you've got the money and you you're enjoying Conqueror's Blade, I would consider premium after that. So the rest of the tabs are currently locked out, so what I'm gonna do is do these in a future video for you, but right now what I'm gonna go through is the map of the town. All of the different icons are in a key, which will let you know exactly what you do, but what you need to do here, just keep going through your capital city and keep doing the quests that are popping up because these quests are going to unlock new stuff and they're going to teach you more about how to play the game and everything. You will get put into a siege battle as part of this quest chain after doing a uh, artillery and siege weapons training module. Once you're in the siege battle, play it like it's a real thing. Now, I couldn't actually determine whether 
the baddies were AI or actual players. I'm not. I'm still not 100% sure, but either way, play it as you normally would. Play it as a real life battle because the better you do in this game mode, the more rewards you will get out of it as well. This is the first chance where you really get to play and put all that training into action now as well. So remember all your unit training, all your mounts training, and all your siege and artillery equipment training as well, and really give it a go in the siege battle and see actually how things play out, how people move around the map, how people work together, how people actually go around and play siege battles. This is a really nice map to learn a siege battle on. I'm not sure if this is just the default map or if this map is random. Hopefully this is the default map for your first siege battle because this map is very, very good and very useful to learn how to play a siege battle on. However, if it is a different map for you, don't worry because it will still teach you how to play Siege very, very well. And actually in the rotation, this specific map doesn't come up that often in the game. So don't worry too much if you don't get into this one. So as you go through and you play your Siege and you're learning how all the different unit types work and all the rest of it and you're starting to work together with your team capturing the points and ending the Siege battle, you will hopefully get to the victory screen which is right here and this shows you your stats, your unit stats, your team stats and it also gives you a nice map of actually how the action played out through the game. So in this victory screen you have all your achievements right down the bottom, it will tell you what unit types have leveled up and it will give you a breakdown of all the rewards you've gained from that battle so the bronze the honor and the experience as well so honor is what you use in the uh, unit type tree where you go through and unlock different unit types so that's what honor is for experience is obviously going to be leveling you up and bronze is your basic game currency which you'll be using a lot of to begin with to repair your kits and to buy certain items with as well. Go through each of these different screens at the top here and just go through it and learn what they each do and what they can tell you because they all are actually very useful indeed. Once you finish going through all those screens, then come on out of the battle and go through what I would suggest is go through the unit type tree. Now this breaks it down into all the different unit types so you have five different tabs on the left and all of the different trees on those tabs. Work through and see what kind of things you want to be working towards. Some people will prefer to play a ranged character, some people will prefer to play melee, some people will prefer to play cavalry. So have a look through all the different tree types and see exactly actually which one is going to fit your playstyle best because you want to be putting all your honour into that specific tree to begin with because honour is quite a grind to get once you start getting up into the higher levels of the unit type tree as well. Have a good playthrough and see what you want to unlock. Later on in the game if you figure out that actually you've unlocked stuff you didn't want then you can reset these using honour reset tokens but again these cost real life money so just bear this in mind you do have the option to reset stuff it, but it will cost you so you want to obviously be making the the good decisions right now right in the early start of the game so you're not going to have to worry about resetting things later on down the line so that's where i'm going to be leaving this video thank you very much for watching folks i hope this has kind of broken the game down a little bit for you and given you a few details of what to expect in the initial parts of the game all i can say is play the game through as much as you can and you will get just through natural experience actually all the different uh, game mechanics functions and everything you'll pick it up very very quickly the game seems a lot more detailed than what it actually is in terms of its systems once you actually start to understand the systems you will learn how to play the game very efficiently and very effectively very quickly so just keep on playing keep on going through it and keep giving everything a go and see what happens it's my best bit of advice to be honest Thank you very much for watching folks, please do let me know down in the comments below if this video has helped you, let me know in the comments below as well if there's anything specifically you want me to cover for Conqueror's Blade, whether that be from a new starter kind of point of view or from an experienced veteran point of view as well, I'm more than happy to cover stuff from both sides of the game. Thank you very much for watching folks. Enjoy your time in Conqueror's Blade, it is a fantastic game and you've chosen a solid game to play. I hope to catch you on the battlefield.